For this question, you're probably going to need to decide, do I stink at algebra or am I good at algebra? If you stink at algebra, you're probably not going to solve it the way I'm going to show you at first. I will show you in the end, but uh, you still need to know how to do all this stuff. So you should get better at algebra. This is not hard. Basically, whenever we have a fraction, a, a, a good goal is to get rid of the fraction. And we do that in math through multiplication because fractions are basically division, right? So you cancel something out using its opposite. If a fraction is division, then multiplication will cancel it out. So I would have to multiply both sides by x plus 6 to make the denominator go away on the left, right? Because it's x plus 6 over 1, and it's kind of like we're reducing this fraction to make the denominator disappear. But when we do it on the right, we got to be careful because x plus 6 is like a, a unit, right? That's why I put those parentheses there. So when we deal with it, we have to distribute and make sure that that x that we're multiplying goes to both parts. So if I already lost you, just stay with me a little bit. You're going to get to the easier explanation at the end, but you should really know this. So what we end up with is 55 is equal to, if I distribute, x squared plus 6x. And then every time that we have a quadratic, anytime we see an x squared, we really want to get everything equal to 0 so that we can factor. So I would subtract 55 from both sides. That would get me 0 is equal to x squared plus 6x minus 55. And then remember, we're, we're factoring. We need to also know how to do this. So we're breaking it up into those little pieces and parentheses. In this case, we need numbers that add to 6 and multiply to negative 55. So that means one of them is going to be positive and one is going to be negative. And there aren't many numbers or many combinations of numbers that multiply to 55. So it's going to be plus 11 and minus 5. Double check that, right? 11 times negative 5 is negative 55. And 11 minus 5 is 6. So that checks out. But if we want the answer, we actually need to re reverse these signs because of the way that factoring works. You probably can do this in your head, but just to remind you, basically what we're doing when we factor is we're turning our big equation into two smaller equations that are easier to solve. So x plus 11 would equal 0. We'd subtract 11, and we'd get x is equal to negative 11. If we did the same thing here, we would add the 5, and we would get x is equal to positive 5. And since it wants the positive solution, we have to put 5. Remember, on the new test, you can bubble negative numbers. You can, you can submit negative answers. But this question says we don't want the negative. So if you put negative 11 here, you're going to get it wrong. They specifically told you not to, even though negative 11 is a solution to this equation. So it's confusing. But let's put that aside, right? So that, none of that made any sense. What could we have done instead? Well, luckily, we have a built-in graphing calculator for every single math question on the new SAT. So I kind of set this up already here for you. Notice what I um, put into my, my two red and blues here, right? I put 55 over x plus 6. That was the left side of the equation. And I have x as the right side. And so basically what I'm doing is I'm pretending instead of this being one equation, it's two. And I'm looking at where the two intersect. And sure enough, they intersect right there at the point 5, 5. And so there's my answer because uh, that's what my x coordinate would be, right? So there's another way to do it too, where instead of doing two equations, I just do one. So let me do that. And notice that gives me just a straight line. And that's because in this case, it's kind of like almost the, the calculator is doing the algebra for you and it's telling you x is 5. So it doesn't matter the y. It doesn't, there was no y. So it doesn't think that way. So that might be weird to kind of like wrap your head around like why that is that way. But if you can get used to it, then a lot of the stuff you can just solve really easily. There's my 5. It's just, it's, you can see it going through there. Um, however, look, notice if I do go over, I see that negative 11 is an answer as well. It also has a line there. So that shouldn't bother us because it did say positive solution in the question. But you can see why these two things are related. They're both kind of being shown as answers. So if you're bad at algebra, you better get good at using a calculator because it's going to come in handy on a lot of questions where you really should know the algebra. By 11th grade, you should know how to factor. But if you don't, the calculator can save you, and I will try my best in all my explanations to show you how it would work.